Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, those of you who are part of the defrauded homeowners of America, please understand the lawsuit is done. I am proofreading it now, and I'm actually very, very impressed with how that is put together and the strategy and the direction we're headed in. I am prepared for them playing their game about dismissing it, but I'm also prepared. You might as well thank Rod Class. Rod Class deserves a lot of credit for everything that he had done. I haven't heard anything from Rod Class in quite a while, but a lot of respect for Mr. Rod Class. That pro se individual went all the way to the Supreme Court. Pro se! Now, you guys don't understand getting something before the Supreme Court and having them hear the argument, and he won. All you got to do is look his name up, Rod Class, and get some information on Rod Class. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's one thing. I just, there are a couple of things I need to explain to you. Jurisdiction is the number one thing. You must challenge jurisdiction from the very beginning. You must understand something. The moment you challenge jurisdiction, if they don't prove jurisdiction, there is no case. It's not because I said it, it's because the courts have consistently said it. Well, when is the first time you should be challenging jurisdiction? Pay attention. When the officer pulls you over. So we've created for our people who are part of the Fourth Amendment program, the, I remind you, you're under oath. And you staple that, pay attention, staple that to your so-called registration or title. Just staple it. Doesn't matter if he's already taken it. We don't care. Look here, mother, you've been placed on notice. I don't care if you throw it to the ground. You got a camera. It shows me handing it to you. Ta-da! He can say whatever he wants. Just say, I'm just challenging your jurisdiction. I just need you to prove you have jurisdiction. So where are you deriving your authority for this interaction? He's going to tell you something about some code or some statute. No. I What law? Well, under revised statute. Excuse me. I didn't ask you about no code. I asked you about a law. Codes are not law. Congress does not write codes. Congress is only authorized to write law. It's called the legislative process. If you don't know about the legislative process, then you don't belong out here on these streets trying to enforce law. He's not code enforcement, but he enforces codes. This is about law. That's, that's the, as simple as you can make it. Challenge his jurisdiction right then and there. Then comply after that. Once you challenge jurisdiction, anything they do after that, they are without jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to show you a couple of cases. Okay, these cases stand uh, the proposition that police officers and federal agents, before they can arrest anyone, there needs to be probable cause. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't finished doing this. I just put together the case laws first. Probable cause means a hearing. Now, it says unreasonable searches and seizures. Well, we don't care about the search and seizure unreasonable part. We care about the fact that it says no warrant shall issue. But upon probable cause. Well, probable cause requires a hearing. Only judges can issue a warrant, and they cannot issue a warrant without a hearing. There can be no hearingless issuance of a warrant. Let's do that. I ain't tested that out. Let's test it out. Before a warrant can be issued, comma, the law says that there must be a hearing before a judge comma, and probable cause must be determined, period. Please provide three case citations supporting this conclusion. Question mark. Stop listening. And I will need for you to verify each case and provide the opinion of the court specific to this Question, question mark. Stop listening. Sorry, I want him to verify it instead of me telling him to verify afterwards. He's going to take a couple more seconds longer, but I'm going to, I do that because I just need it verified, y'all. Here are three case citations supporting the conclusion. Let, let's let him talk about it. Y'all need to hear me. 
opening my mouth. Hold on. Sure. Here are three case citations supporting the conclusion that a warrant can only be issued after a hearing before a judge and probable cause must be determined. 1. Coleman v. Burnett, 472 U.S. 759, 1986. In Coleman v. Burnett, the Supreme Court held that the Fourth Amendment requires a neutral and detached magistrate to determine probable cause before a warrant may be issued. The court reasoned that the purpose of the Fourth Amendment is to protect individuals from unreasonable searches and seizures, and that this purpose is best served by having a neutral and detached magistrate make the determination of probable cause. 2. Illinois v. Gates, 462 U.S. 211, 1983. In Illinois v. Gates, the Supreme Court held that the totality of the circumstances test should be used to determine probable cause. The court reasoned that this test is more flexible than the traditional two-pronged test, and that it is better able to accommodate the realities of police work. 3. Jones v. United States, 564 U.S. 229, 2011. In Jones v. United States, the Supreme Court held that the good-faith exception to the exclusionary rule applies when an officer relies on a search warrant that was subsequently held invalid. The court reasoned that the good-faith exception is necessary to protect law enforcement officers who are acting in reliance on a judicial determination of probable cause. No, sorry, there is no good-faith exception in the Constitution. There's a good-faith exception under statute but there is no good faith exception in the Constitution. A peace officer or a judge cannot violate a single person's right because, pay attention, no one may be held. No one. No one. Absolutely no one may be held without probable cause. No search warrant shall issue. No warrant, period, shall issue without probable cause, which means there must be a hearing. So when I go do things he and I play all the time, I didn't ask him for those. Let's see if I can get them to give me different cases. Uh, citation Jones versus City of Los Angeles. That ain't me. Court held the Fourth Amendment prohibition against an illegal search and seizure require a neutral. Uh, this is the same thing. So, the what's defining Fourth Amendment warrant? Blah blah blah. And right here, this case, New York Fourth Amendment prohibits unreasonable searches and seizure applies to warrantless entries into a person's home to make an arrest. Okay, there is no such thing as a warrantless entry into a person's home. Okay, you don't get to go into a person's home to make an arrest without a warrant. Go back and look at the law. A person has the right to be secure in their person's properties. They have that reasonable expectation. So making the determination of probable cause before a warrant can issue, uh -uh. it don't, nobody, can make a determination of probable cause because probable cause is a hearing. So the Constitution doesn't permit them to do that. Well, anyway, <sighs> I digress. Let me go ahead and get back to our conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, police officers are not permitted to determine what probable cause is. They do not have this thing called reasonable suspicion. There is no such thing as reasonable suspicion in the Constitution. Go ahead and take a look. Well, you have constitutionally secured rights. Statute provides for reasonable suspicion. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh-oh, got to go answer this. Y'all hold on a second. Always got to interrupt me. Hold on now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take a look at what the court said in this case. Doe versus Unical Corporation. The court held that the burden of proving jurisdiction is on the party asserting it. Whoever claims they have jurisdiction while the police officer pulls you over, see, it doesn't just apply to the court, it applies to anyone claiming to be in charge. Now, pay attention, even if the defendant has not filed a formal motion to dismiss, the court stated that the defendant is not required to raise the issue of jurisdiction in order to challenge it. I am telling you guys that you have the right. You must challenge jurisdiction from the very beginning, from the onset. Now, look, the laws you did not know exist, you guys know about that. The laws that you did not know exist, hold on. Laws that you did not know exist. Oh, this ain't it. This is a different one. This is the lawsuit. No, we're not looking for that. I'm looking for the laws you did not know exist. Dag nabbit. I don't have it up. I got to find it. Hold on. I think I put it in PDF. I think it's in PDF, y'all. I think I put it in PDF on purpose. 
Yep, it ain't here because it should have been one of the first ones. Get on out of here. No, hold on. Get on. You get on out of here too. Ain't nobody talking to you. Uh oh, it don't want to go. So y'all give me a second to. Uh oh. I, I. You know what I gotta do? That's right. I can't show some things to y'all. So y'all just gotta sit back and relax because I'm gonna put y'all on pause again. Wait, laws you did not know exist. It should be right here. Hold on, because I put it here. The New Deal, nope, that's too late. The law, 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 nope, ain't here. So, Y-O-U-D-I-D-N-O-T. Uh-oh, that ain't D-I-D-N-O-T. N-O-T, give me my real N-O-T. Okay, then we're going to do, hold on. It want to take its times. T H E L A W S. Now, there are two of the laws you never knew existed and the laws you did not know exist. Okay? Just understand, we're going to find it. I got to put y'all on pause. I ain't going to leave y'all on. Okay, I hope you guys stop listening. Stop listening. I hope you guys didn't forget about the laws you didn't know exist. Now, this is on page. What is it? What's the page? 30 of 109. A lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. But the first thing they do in here, they tell you to challenge jurisdiction off the bat. Okay? Challenging jurisdiction is one of the best defenses you can make from the very beginning, even when the officer pulls you over. The first thing I have to let you know is I, I'm challenging your jurisdiction. So I just need you to prove you have jurisdiction at this moment before we go any further. If he argues with you, say, okay, just wanted to make sure that you recognize I put my jurisdictional challenge on the record. That's it. They have no authority after that. Pay attention to this. Because if you use the right argument, it is almost impossible for you to lose. If they attempt to tell you that you can't question their jurisdiction, you can easily shut them up with the following court rulings. We're putting together a document right now, okay? Anyway, once jurisdiction is challenged, the court cannot proceed when it clearly appears that it lacks jurisdiction. Not just the court, police officers, any organization, anything. The court has no authority to reach merits or rather it should, but rather should dismiss the action. Ladies and gentlemen, the courts cannot determine its own jurisdiction. That's even an administrative. The law requires proof of jurisdiction to appear on the record of an administrative of the administrative of the administ of the police department, which is an administrative agency and all administrative proceedings. Pay attention. Hey, look, I just wasn't explaining this thing to y'all the correct way. So I'm doing it now, okay, doing it now. Ladies and gentlemen, challenge the jurisdiction off the bat. It has, cannot be said to be sovereign. Why? Because they need to have jurisdiction. Now, I look, there is a case. Many of you guys may not be aware of this case, but I had to download the case because I got to go look at this case because this case is absolutely necessary. No, that's not the one I need. I need, no, oh, this is, <laughs> sorry, I had already had it right here. The laws you did not know exist, so we're going to stick with, yeah, we can save you. We're going to stick with this one. Go, get on out of here now. We're going to stick with this one over here. Okay, this is going to be our friend, our best friend. Okay, now anyway, the laws that you never knew exist, ladies and gentlemen, the court must prove on the record all jurisdictional facts related to the jurisdiction asserted. Now, many people were looking at these cases and they couldn't find these cases. They went online looking for these cases. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, because when they were looking for these cases, many of these cases, some of these cases are well known, but many of these cases were pay attention so that you get it because many of you weren't understanding it non-published cases because they were non-published cases people were trying to find them and they couldn't find them okay so here is the here is the statement that you all need to be paying attention to in lopez lopez and u.s versus lopez and u.s versus hagan's or well, hagan versus Levine. sorry void due to lack of jurisdiction in lopez the circuit court called it right and in hagen it had to go to the supreme court before it was called right in both cases void 
challenge jurisdiction and motion to dismiss right off the bat. Challenge to jurisdiction and motion to dismiss right off the bat. Anybody brings a charge against you, especially those of you who are dealing with mortgages and somebody wants to do an unlawful foreclosure, challenge jurisdiction and do a motion to dismiss right off the bat. We got you. Okay, we coming with that pretty soon, but I've been working on this lawsuit and now we're getting ready to get back to our Fourth Amendment people and work with them. So it got it coming, but I'm just giving y'all, hey, I ain't slowing down. Not yet, but I will be in the future. So for right now, 16 minutes is all I can give you because I got to go. All right, been a long day. I mean, a long day. I've been without the internet for about two weeks, but we're okay now. I'm back, 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 back on the block, you know. Gotta go.